All right, so if for um, end behavior in words, it's even, correct? And it's positive right here. So you said it was? Up and up. Up and up. This would be describing it in words. Now you have to be able to describe it in calculus notation or formal notation. So hopefully you were able to say, as x is approaching infinity, um, f of x is approaching. So look, as x goes this way, where's our function approaching? Infinity, good. And then as x is going to negative infinity, where's our function approaching? f of x is also approaching infinity. Okay, good. How many got that one right? Raise your hand. Sweet. Moving on. It's odd, so it's opposite, right? Odd is opposite. It's negative, so isn't it like a negative line? Okay, yeah. so it's up and down. Good. Then as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to negative. negative infinity, and then as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. Okay, good. Now let's talk about the possible number of turning points, the total possible. On a test, you're going to want to um, list out all possible. So for degree 8, what's the highest number of turning points we could have? 7. 7, but we could have 5 or 3 or 1. Could we have 0? No, because it's got to turn and go back up, right? Okay, good. So with this one, the most number of turning points would be 4 or or zero. zero. Good. And then if I said how many does it actually have, you'd graph it and count. Okay, sweet. Okay, so now erase your whiteboards or do it. You can do this on your uh, whatever notes if you want. I don't care where you do it. But I want you to tell me what is the degree of this polynomial. So we learned this last time. Let's make sure we're good before we move on. So if you do it on a whiteboard, great. If not, put your final answer on a whiteboard and hold it up. And then I'll just say yep or nope. So, you guys said it was quadratic, and that was because you did, you did subtraction, right? Mm -hmm. And you got some numbers here, then you subtract. They weren't the same the first time we took differences, then you subtracted them again, and what was the constant you got? Negative so you got negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. So then you took two differences, so it's quadratic. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. <clears throat> a common mistake on a test is people will say cubic, because they count 1, 2, 3, but... It's how many differences. We only had to take differences twice. Okay, all good with that. Sweet, let's go on to 22 on the homework from last time. Now, um, we just have to be able to simplify things correctly. If you've already handed in the homework for today, great. If not, you can make sure you're good with this one. You can hand it in in a second. If you've handed it in, that's fine. Just make sure you know how to do it correctly. So it says, name the polynomial. Well, remember, we have to put this in standard form. Guess what? People cannot simplify this one correctly a lot of times. So I'm going to ask you a really important question. Think about algebra. Think about why something would work versus why it would not. Could I, if I wanted to simplify this because I need it in standard form, could I take B and multiply it in here and here first? No. Why not? You're right. Yeah. Yeah, because this B, this B is not squared. If you put it in, wouldn't it be squared? You'd be squaring that B as well. Does everybody understand that? Now I'm going to ask you another important question. Would we be able to go like this? Square that, square that. No, that's breaking what Miss Christensen calls the most forbidden rule. There's always one person who does it on the first test. So guys, there's a difference between this. B minus 3 squared and something like this. 3B squared. This is a time sign. This is a subtraction sign. You can't just distribute that there and there because of the subtraction sign. If it's a multiplication sign, it would be appropriate to square both of those. This would be 9B squared. However, this would not be b minus 9, or b squared minus 9. That's not true. Because think about why not. Isn't something squared, it, it times itself again. So we really have this, b times b minus 3 times b minus 3. Now if we multiply this out, you're going to see it is not this. So let's multiply it out. b times b is b squared. Minus 3b, minus 3b's, correct? And then plus 9. So what we have here is b squared, those become minus 6b's plus 9. Look, they're not the same. So never ever just square that or square that. That's breaking the most forbidden of all forbidden rules. Then we still have times by b. So we got to put it in parentheses and then distribute b through. So we would have b, whoa, b cubed minus 6b squared plus 9b's. And now we can name it. So the name would be cubic trinomial.
meal. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's get to what we're doing today. It was a really good lesson. We went slow, tons of homework time in class, so we're going to be good to go. So we're going to be dealing with even and odd functions, determining if a function is even or odd, and then we're going to just be doing advanced simplification of polynomials, adding polynomials, subtracting, and multiplying, which is really easy. We're just going to have more advanced ones in here. Okay, so what we're going to be able to do is determine if a function is even, odd, or neither. So here is what we're going to look at first. So it says some functions can be classified as even or odd. Now you can determine whether a function is even or odd by looking at the graph. That's one way we're going to get good at. You can also determine if, some, if a function is even or odd based on algebra. And we will talk about that here in a second. So I'm going to scroll up. All this is kind of nasty. Let's just look at and make a visualization here. Okay, so let's talk about even functions first. So in your notes, this is what you should be writing. It's even. So even functions are symmetric over the y-axis. Even functions have symmetry over y. So symmetry over the y-axis. All even functions will be symmetric over y, meaning if I take this side and stamp it over the y-axis, it will be symmetric, perfectly the same. So look, this green point stamps to this green point. Does everybody see? All right, so if we have a picture of a graph, we can determine if it's even, if it's symmetric over the y-axis. Um, now, here's another way you can determine if it's even. So let's say we didn't have a graph. Well, how could we determine if it's even? Well, let me point something out to you. Okay, I went on an even function because it has symmetry over y. I went over positive x, and I got out a positive y. True? Now look what happens. If I start here and plug in instead of positive x, if I plug in negative x, don't I still get out positive that same exact y value? Yeah. So that's actually what we do for algebra. So write this down. Algebra. This is how we determine if something is even with algebra. You plug in negative x into the function, because instead of looking at positive x, we want to look at negative x. So you plug in negative x. I'm putting it in parentheses. You plug it into the function f of x. Then you simplify it down. If it comes out to be f of x, again, look, if it comes out to be the same f of x, so we're plugging in negative x, so maybe I should go like this. If it comes out to be the original f of x, it's even. We plug in a negative x and we get out the same y value, it's even. Okay, so odd functions. Let's talk about odd. Odds have symmetry over the y then x axis. Or you could do the x then y. I just always think of the y then x. It will be the same. So you have to have symmetry over both axes. So symmetry over y then x. So that's how you can determine if something is odd. Symmetry over, so take this green dot, stamp it over y, then stamp it over x, and it puts me down here. So let's talk about the algebra. What's going to happen with the algebra if it's odd? So looking at my picture here, watch, I'm plugging in positive x, and I get out positive y. Does everybody see? Yeah. Now, just like over here when we plugged in negative x, we're going to plug in negative x again, except for this time we're going to get negative y. Does everybody see? So this, what we do for algebra is we take and we plug in a negative x into f of x. We simplify it down. And if it comes out to be negative 1 times the original function, you see? Negative 1 times the original function, then it's considered odd. There are functions that are not odd and not even. You can't classify them as odd or even, so that would be neither. So let's practice both of those ways. Hey, so grab your graphing calculator. I'm going to ask you to type in this function right here and tell me, based on the graph, is it even, odd, or neither? Go. Axis is the same, yes. Does it look something like, like that, kind of? Yeah. I didn't draw that very good because this should have been. It's symmetric over y, perfectly symmetric. I can't freehand it very good. Well, okay, great. If you have a graph, it's pretty easy. Now I'm going to show you how to verify that with algebra. 
You have to be able to do this part. This is really the best way to, to determine is to use algebra. So let's take the original function. I'm going to write it down. f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x four squared plus 2. And we're going to plug in negative x. So now we're going to take and plug in negative x wherever there's an x. We're replacing it. Now, guys, if you're replacing something or plugging something in, you need parentheses. So always use parentheses. So now we have negative x to the fourth, plugging in negative x, minus 4, plugging in negative x, so that'll be times by negative x squared plus 2. So we plug in negative x. Now, to know, you need to simplify that down correctly. So let's be really careful on our algebra. So think about it. A negative 1 is really right here. A negative 1 is really right there. It's not breaking the forbidden rule to do fourth power that and that because that's a multiplication sign. What's negative 1 to the fourth power? 1. one. So don't we have positive x to the fourth now? So we rewrite it. X to the fourth. Okay, good. Now we still have minus 4. Nothing's going to happen to that for right now. Minus 4. And then don't we have a negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. So we just have minus 4x squared. True? And then we have plus 2. We have simplified this completely. Now what you do is you compare it to the original, original function. Let's look at the original. Boom. Right there's the original. Is it the exact same? Yes. Yeah. So it's even. Yes. Uh, why is, uh, why did you write that negative sign twice uh, in the x squared? Because, uh, yes, so. So we have a negative 4. Uh-huh. And then we have, we're plugging in negative right here. We're replacing that with a negative x. Right? Anywhere there's x, we're plugging in negative x. Oh. You're replacing it. Does that make sense? Oh. Yeah, good question. So now we can compare it. It's even. Now let me show you what an odd function would have looked like. Let me show you. So if it would have been odd, we would have simplified it and got this. Negative 1 times the original. So this is what would have happened if we simplified and got something odd. You see how this is a negative 1, but that's the exact same as the original? This would be odd. So what if it would have been neither? Um, what would have happened was something like uh, negative 1 x to the fourth plus 4x four squared minus 2. It's negative 1, but that's not the original. The signs are all over the place. Do you guys see? So that would be neither. It's not even, it's not odd. Okay, cool. Let's do another one. All right, so we're just going to use algebra. So write this one down in your notes. Is it even, odd, or neither? This one's really important. Now, fun fact for you. People fail calculus not because calculus is hard. Calculus is easy. Want to know what's hard for people? Algebra. It is literally algebra that fails people in calculus. Alge um, calculus is easy. Algebra is hard for people. It's the algebra. So by the end of my class, you have to be so good at algebra. And, I, and you will be. Lucky for you. So here we go. Let's plug this in and simplify correctly. We've got to know our algebra really good. So we have our original function. I like to rewrite it just so I have it. g of x is equal to 1 over x cubed plus x. So what we do to test it using algebra is we plug in a negative x. So g of negative x. Now once again, if you're substituting in that for that and that, use parentheses. So now we have negative x cubed, true? Mm -hmm. Plus negative x. We have accomplished the first step here. Now our goal is to simplify it completely down so we can compare it to the original. So let's simplify this. On top we have a 1 still. Now, a negative 1 cubed is a negative. So isn't this negative x cubed, everyone? So this becomes negative x cubed. Now, plus a negative is a minus sign. True? Okay, now everybody remember a, a rule. If we had, if I said to you, remember back to a couple lessons ago when we were factoring, let's say we had this, negative x squared plus 2x. We would need to factor out a negative because there's a negative in the leading term, correct? You always need to do that. Anytime you see a negative in front in this class, always factor it out. So this is not still considered simplified. What we need to do is say there's a negative in the leading term. So we need to rewrite this again. So we have 1 over, we're going to factor out a negative 1. Then divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1 to see what's left in our parentheses. So won't that become positive x cubed? 
and now it's plus x. Now everybody look over here, I'm going to make a connection for you. Hey, is there a difference between this? Let's say I have 2 divided by negative 1. Is that any different than negative 2 divided by positive 1? Is that any different than pulling out the negative in front and doing negative 2 over 1? So you're saying if we have a negative, we can put it on bottom, we can put it on top, or we can put it out in front. Yes, okay. So let's look here. Is the negative 1 stuck on bottom? No. We can put it on top. We can put it out in front. So let's put it out in front. Does everybody see? So we really have negative 1 in front, and then left is 1 over x cubed plus x. Same thing. We just pulled out the negative 1 in front. Now let's compare that to the original. Negative 1 times the exact original, isn't it? Well, then we know it's odd. So on a test, you have to be able to be really good at algebra and go clear to this point. If you guess, if you say, if you do the algebra wrong and you happen to get the right answer, I'm still marking it wrong. I have to see this, so I see the word odd, I say they got it right, is their algebra right? Yes. So they get the point. Does that make sense? Awesome, let's do another one. Be really careful with your algebra. Actually, never mind, let's have you practice some. So go to the back, like literally just flip your worksheet to the back page. Go through and do algebra very carefully, simplifying it so you can compare it to the original. Talk to each other, ask me once you get it if you're right. Ready, go. If you have the word odd on number 12, that's not correct. You'd say I need to plug in negative x. So that would be four times negative x plus five, everybody, right? which is negative 4x plus 5. You'd say, okay, I haven't simplified it all the way down quite yet because there's that negative in front, which Miss Christensen said you can't have. Unless, I mean, you can, you've got to factor it out, though. So we're going to pull out a negative 1 in front. So divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So then left would be 4x minus 5. Okay, now we have simplified it completely. Compare it to the original function. We have a negative 1. Is it times the original? No. no. AKA, not odd. It's definitely not even, so it's neither. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Continue. Let's say we had this at this step. We have negative x cubed plus x all over negative x to the fifth. Okay, you still focus separately. So what you're going to do is say, okay, I have the top, which has a negative in the leading term. I need to factor out a negative 1. Is everybody paying attention? So on top, I'm going to pull out a negative 1. This is just the top I'm worrying about right now. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So then left in my parentheses would be positive x cubed, and now minus x. True? So you still focus on the top and bottom separately. Now on bottom, we have negative 1 times x to the 5th, don't we? Negative 1 times x to the 5th. Well, in this one, there's not only one negative. There's a negative on top and on bottom. So what would they do? Okay, so now my final answer would just be x cubed minus x all over x to the 5th. Compare that to the original function. No, there's not. Okay, good. Awesome. So isn't it even? Yes. yes. You have a way misconception about an absolute value. Okay. Absolute value, a lot of you say, is positive. Yes. But guys, this is an unknown. You can't say that that needs to be positive. That's not true. Can't I plug in a 10? And it's okay. Do you guys see how, it, because it's an unknown, it, it's okay that it's a minus sign. It's not a negative. It's a minus sign. Minus signs are okay in absolute values because that's an unknown. Everybody understand the difference? Okay, so how we test this is we say, we're gonna test, so our, I'm gonna write it down right here just so I have it bigger. Um, this is what we have originally, and we need to plug in negative x, true? So we have g of negative x, let's see what happens here. Absolute value, we have negative x plus one, plus absolute value, negative x minus one, true? Now you say, I need to simplify this. Now what do you see? The one rule Ms. Christensen gives you is if you have a negative in the leading term, you need to factor out a negative one. Now think about it. I said factor out. I don't mean out here. Isn't it in the absolute values? 
then you can't magically float it outside the absolute values. It's stuck inside. So let's rewrite it. So we have, I'm just going to write equals, sorry. Equals, we have absolute value. We're pulling out a negative 1. So then divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So then left is x minus 1 now. Like that. Plus, pull out a negative 1. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. Left is x plus 1. Now, here's, we'll keep going. We'll keep simplifying. Okay, now everybody, there's a multiplication sign right there and right there. Because it's multiplication, we can split this apart. They're both in absolute values. So let's do absolute value of negative 1 times by, changing color so you can see it, absolute value of x minus 1. Do you see how they're the same thing, just written separated? Okay, so then plus absolute value of negative 1 times by absolute value of x plus 1. Now, an absolute value of a negative is positive. See, this is the work you would show. So we have 1 times absolute value of x minus 1 plus 1 times absolute value of x plus 1. So now 1 times anything is just itself. So we have absolute value of x minus 1 plus absolute value of x plus 1. Now we have simplified it completely. So let's compare that to the original. Wasn't the original, look at number 6, absolute value of x plus 1 plus absolute value of x minus 1? Is 2 plus 3 any different than 3 plus 2? No. So when you compare these, they are the same thing. Yeah. So it would be even. But you got to show your steps just like this. Okay? Don't have misconceptions about absolute values. Okay, continue in that same section for a while. Related to something else. Okay, let's say I have x to the negative 2. I just did this example with someone over here. x cubed. Okay, so if I said simplify this, yes, you could take this base, flip it down. Leaving me with a 1 on top and leaving me with x. When you flip it down, we'd have x squared. And so that would be x to the fifth on bottom. Does everybody understand that? There's a difference, though, between that and this. Look, if I have x to the negative 2 plus, let's say, x to the fifth all over x cubed, you can't take and flip this down. There's a plus sign here. You can't do it across a plus sign, everybody. So you could not take this down. Did you hear that? That's algebraically incorrect. You could. You could flip it over itself. So you can take and flip it up here. So we could take this down right there. So we would have 1 over x to the second power plus x to the fifth. And then that's all over x to the cube. And aren't you making it freaking ugly? Okay, so maybe don't tackle it that way, everybody. But make sure you know the difference algebraically. So some of you are way, way overthinking this. Plug in a negative x, people, and think a little bit. Not too much, though. You're, you don't need to do anything with the negative exponent on this one. Try again. All right, we're going through it at this point. So we know we can plug in a negative x. f of negative x. So watch what happens. So we have two parentheses negative x, true? Yes. Yes. Minus two minus negative x, and then that's all over two. So then you went like this. So we have two to the negative x minus two to the positive x all over two. A lot of you are stopping there and then comparing it to the original. Look back at the original versus that. Now, a lot of you are comparing them here and saying neither, but here's where you gotta be careful. The original started with the positive exponent written first. You gotta stay consistent or you're really not comparing them. Does that make sense? So this isn't comparing, just in this order, it's not comparing it to the original. We need to reorder it so that the positive one comes first and the negative one comes second. So let's reorder this correctly. So if we need a positive exponent to be first, won't this still be negative two to the positive x, everyone? So we have negative two to the positive x, and then this is a plus, right? Positive. So then plus two raised to the negative x, all over 2. Now it's in the same order. We have a negative in front. So we need to factor out. I'm going to come right here because I want to keep this original up. So I need to factor out a negative 1, don't I? Yeah. So I'll pull out a negative 1. So then you'll divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So then left is positive 2 raised to the x. Now it's minus 2 raised to the negative x. All over Two. So now we can compare it. Isn't this the original? 
and it's negative one times the original, so it's odd. Good job, a lot of you got it right. It would be tragic on a test if you missed simple addition and multiplication, but a lot of people do, like a ton. So watch. Everybody, now we're just going to be adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials, but there's going to be a lot to it. So just watch carefully. Uh, with these parentheses, there's nothing being multiplied in front, so can't I just ignore them? Negative x minus 3. Yeah. Okay, now we have negative all that stuff. So that's negative 1 times all that stuff. I would have to distribute all that stuff. So minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. Is everybody good with that? Now we have plus all that stuff. Well, it's not times anything, so we'll just have minus x squared minus 4. True? Mm -hmm. Now combine like terms. So we'll start with the highest degree. Minus 2x squared minus 1x squared is how many x squared? Minus 3x squared. Minus x minus 4x. Minus 5x's. Minus 3 minus 4. And then you're done. Next one, watching. So this is a time sign. Shouldn't we multiply before we add or subtract? Yes. So we would distribute the x through very quickly. So we'll have negative x cubed plus 3x minus 4x. True? Yeah. Cross that out. Distribute 2 in. So then we have minus 2x squared. It's true? Plus 6x and then minus 8. Then you'd say I have negative 1 times all that stuff. Ding, ding. So then don't we have minus x minus 4? Yeah. Yeah. Now you would combine like terms, start with the highest degree, negative x cubed, no other x cubed. Plus 3x squared minus 2x squared. Now when I cross them out, I ensure that I don't miss anything. Minus 4x plus 6x. Yep, okay, well let's do these two first. So we have 2x, 2x minus 1x. So plus x, and then minus 8 minus 4. And done. Next one. Okay, if we're multiplying these two together, can we do it? What's that times that? Okay, good. That times that. Plus 4xy's. Yep, let's stay consistent. So let's go xy again and then that. Okay, fix that then. Positive 3xy's. Okay, good catch. Okay, combine like terms. So we have negative 6x squared plus 7xy is true. Yeah. Minus 2y squared. Fun fact for you. If I said put this in standard form, it doesn't matter the order. Here's why. This is degree 2. This is degree 2. This is degree 1 and degree 1. Since it's being multiplied, it's still degree 2, technically. Just so you know. So it doesn't matter the order. So let's just leave it. Next one. Last one almost. So if you're, guys, everybody listen to the rule. This is a way important rule. If you're ever multiplying three polynomials together, this is the rule every time. Don't just start distributing like a maniac. You first multiply two together, combine like terms, and then multiply in the third. Did you all hear that? Yes. Yes. Follow that rule, you're gonna get it wrong. So I'm gonna multiply just two random ones together. I'll just go with these two. X times X is X squared. Minus three X plus one X. Minus two X's, true? I just combined it so I can go quicker. Does everybody see? And then we have minus 3. So now you would take and multiply in x minus 2 after that. Now you'll distribute that. So you'll have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. Then you'll take your negative 2. So then we have minus 2x squared again plus 4x plus 6. And then you'll combine like terms. x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. Does everybody know the rule for multiplying three polynomials? Multiply two together, combine like terms, and then multiply in the third. Okay. Okay. Question for you. You've got to be able to think a little bit. Let's just set this one up. It says, a rectangle's length is 12 feet longer than the width. The width is shown below. Give a statement for perimeter and area. So everybody, what do we know about the length? 12 feet longer than the width. What's the width? So we have an x minus 5, and then what are we doing to it? Add 12, which is x. X plus 7. So our perimeter, wouldn't our perimeter be that plus that plus that plus that? Yes. So you're saying there's 2x minus 5s, true? Yes. And then plus there's 2x plus 7s. Yes. Or if you could do it the good old fashioned way. X minus 5 plus X minus 5 plus X plus 7 plus X plus 7. Now let's make a statement for area. Isn't area a length times a width? Yep. X plus 7, X minus 5. Is everybody good? Yes. It didn't say simplify, so I could stop. If it did, I'd go. It just said set up a statement. We've done that, we're good.
Cool. That's the end of the lesson. So you have about 20 minutes of class left. About. Ready? Go.